One of the most important aspects of leadership is being a great communicator. Communications. This is a subject that you as leaders, or want to be leaders, have to master. Having great communications puts you in front of people and shows a lot of things about you, and it shows a lot of things about what you think about your relationship with others. So mastering the subject is incredibly important to be an effective leader. This is what it's all about. Let me cover the various aspects of this subject to give you a feel for fully what I mean. One of the most important aspects of great communications is your openness. Your openness in terms of sharing and, and engaging with people and accepting the engagement of people with you. You become an approachable person. You're easy to talk to. You're easy in sharing things about yourself and about the company, about your vision. You're open to communications. You're not, in other words, closed. You're not a curmudgeon. <laughs> You're not kind of putting people off. You show a lot of characteristics in your body language and the way you relate to others that you are open to them approaching you and talking with you. So that's a characteristic that's really first and foremost is the show on your part of being open to a relationship with people on your team. Clarity becomes a important aspect of your communications as well. When you talk to people, you are clear. You're not talking gobbledygook. Your, your talk is not full of acronyms and, and catchphrases. You are clear in your communications. It's straight talk. It's proper sentences. It's usage of words that most people understand. You, you don't try to overpower them with PhD level talk and sophistication, you become a very clear, down to earth, say it like it is, clear person. You appreciate clarity as well. When people talk to you, you listen for clarity. And when you don't get clarity, what do you do? You ask questions until it does become clear. Don't put people in a position of having to try to understand you because they're reluctant to ask you to be clear. Be clear right at the start. Clarity is pretty darn important. You become known as a person who is willing to share. Share yourself, share what you think, share the status of the business, share a lot of things. Communications with your employees, with your customers, with your partners, your investments, your board of directors is straightforward, clear discussions, but you are sharing with them the details and the most important aspects of whatever subject is you're talking about. Sharing is a close cousin to openness. You're, you're open to sharing your viewpoints, the status of things. You're, you're willing to share and embellish upon ideas when you're asked questions. You share your point of view. Become a person that is known to be willing to share their viewpoints. And people will then want to approach you more and ask you what you think about things. And you're open to sharing what you think about things. Do that on a regular basis and people are going to have a whole lot more confidence in you and, and want to hear what you have to say and will follow your lead, believe it or not. So sharing is an important aspect of all of this. In the course of sharing, you're going to let other people talk and you want to be a good listener. A good listener really does listen. You listen for understanding. You don't listen for, how am I going to respond to this? What kind of answer can I come up with? Uh, I didn't really understand what the heck they just said, but I need to get, come up with an answer. So you're thinking about all this background stuff. Well, somebody is talking to you. Don't be that way. Be in the moment, listening to what they're saying. And if you don't understand, what do you do? You ask them questions. You ask them relevant questions to what they were saying. And from their point of view, shows that you listen if you ask questions that make sense, doesn't it? So ask sensible questions. The reason you're doing this is you really want to understand what they mean. In, the, in a reasonable amount of perspective and detail, so that you then can properly respond. It really is a bad deal for them if you 
respond too quickly without understanding what that is that they really mean. Don't get caught in that. You prevent that by asking them further questions. Pretty simple, huh? But there's another aspect of listening that's going on here and that you're not only listening for what they're talking about, the subject at hand, and you're asking questions about that, but you're also listening for where they're coming from. Be known as an empathetic person, a person who listens not only for content, but listens also for how they're feeling, uh, where they're coming from, what's driving their question underneath it all. You try to get underneath and you're listening to really what they're all about. So it's content and listening in an empathetic way. In so doing, you now can be much more sympathetic, sympathetic to their ideas, sympathetic to their point of view, sympathetic about their concern and where they're coming from. And you actively show sympathy as appropriate. So you, you show sympathy in the context of both the content of what's being said to you and your empathetic listening. What this is all about is caring. You want to be known as a person who really does care. You go out of your way, take time. You're listening, 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 and you're sympathetic and so doing and empathetic and so doing. But your expressions after absorbing all this is showing you, give a darn about them. You care. And you care in your response, you care in your actions with respect to your answers to their questions or concerns. You take action based upon what you've learned from these people. You want to be known as a caring person. A caring person acts on what they're saying. And you do it in some appropriate way that shows that you're, you're taking action based upon what you've learned from them. And you've taken the time to fully listen and understand in coming up with your response. So show you care. That will take you a long ways down the road to having a team of people that come to trust you and rely on your advice and your counsel. Sometimes your interactions are those that require you to ask for certain things to be done. And I'm, I'm using the word ask. I'm not using the word tell them what to do. In most situations, I would say 90% of the time, when you want to get people to do something, you have, you have an idea or there's a problem to be solved and you need somebody to get on it, you make requests. Strange as that might sound. You ask them if they can get something done. Can you, and when can you get it done? This is giving them an opportunity to respond that certainly they can do this. And there's a discussion that may ensue about the implications of doing this instead of something else you've asked them to do. So you actually have shown respect to them by asking, making a request for them to take an action of some kind. And you've got their buy-in because they now are telling you, yes, I can do it. And they're able to tell you when they can get something done. They can tell you the implications of it. Why did all this occur? It's because you have a two-way conversation about things that have to be done. You're not known as a person who walks up and down the halls or has meetings and calls people in and tells them what to do. I want this done, I want this done, I want this done, blah, blah, blah. You guys work it out, some malarkey like that. That's not really great leadership. If you walk into these conversations with people by understanding what these problems are, sharing with your viewpoint of it, and then coming at the end of it all, you make a request of certain actions to be taken to, by certain individuals or groups of individuals. You're gonna get a whole lot further down the road and be known as a great leader, someone who can be trusted if you ask for their help. Ask them to get certain things done. And they respond by saying, yes, we can, and here's how we can do it and you share back and forth the details of how something's going to be done. You've got a commitment by someone in a very careful way by letting most of how they're going to get it done be suggested by them. After all, you've hired them to do these kinds of things. Let them shine. Let them tell you how it should be done rather than you try to tell them.
you've got a person who, who's going to make a commitment rather readily and probably follow through on it. It's much stronger leadership. So make requests, not demands. My final thought for you is uh, the form of your communications. Of course, the direct one-on-one -on -one or one-on-group -on -group kind of conversations that I really been kind of talking about, and in whatever venue this is, in board meetings, in meetings with customers, group meetings with team members, management meetings, whatever they are, these are talking discussions. But there's lots of opportunity whereby you may be communicating out over the internet, through social media, where you're reaching a lot of people, perhaps you're featured in marketing programs. You have relationships with lots of people in the industry. I suggest that your content over the social media world, for example, and whatever channels you talk over, is very rich content. And I urge you to consider using video content like I'm kind of doing with you here today. So the media by which you communicate should be kind of the state of the art, show that you are competent within it. You don't have to be some superstar with billions of followers, <laughs> stuff like that. But the select group of people that you reach out to on a weekly, monthly, or at whatever frequency should be rich, should be relevant, should be delivered over the appropriate channels that your followers use. So consider not only the social media, but the content in the form of video, in pictures, and graphs, and relevant articles that you're citing, that you're talking about. Your communication is going to be a, a lot more effective using a lot of rich content into that subject. So there you have it. Communications and how important it is and, and all the aspects of it that strong leaders become very, very good at. So as you're communicating and communicating, and when you think you're done, you're not. Keep communicating. This is a lifetime activity. So be really, really good at your communications using all of the tools of the trade, if you will. And while you're communicating and you think you're, you're done, you're not. But have a good day anyway. <laughs>